Welcome to the Free Play Arcade Podcast. It's Chris Delp being joined by Corey. Say hi. Hello. Arthur. <laughs> Hello. That's a good, firm Mario Maker champion there over go. little kids. Arthur. Hello, right there. I like it. It's a me, that's Arthur. A, that's a throwback to the uh, previous podcast there. Um, and if you can listen to that previous podcast right here on this channel on YouTube, which you can subscribe to, look for that bell icon, hit it an odd number of times. Although stop in like the one fifty seven range. At some point, you're going to lose count. I think, Make sure just to click it on. I, I do think it's like yeah, two ninety nine, three oh one. You get like the super subscribe where you get extra bonus content that's not actually there. That, I'm that sounds right intriguing. Now. That's secret. We're going to go ahead and edit right this now. <laughs> and delete that part <laughs> off the broadcast. So you didn't hear that, thankfully. But back we're going to watch your subscriber numbers bouncing up and down for <laughs> days. Yeah, you're welcome, Matt. <laughs> On to the show. We're going to going to do a little bit of top three list action today. We're, we're doing lists, which uh, we I don't think we've ever done, really. Um, I don't recall. I mean, we, I, the real thing is, I think in numerous podcasts we've said, this is like my favorite game, but we've yeah. never been like super, super serious <laughs> on it. It's, it's more like there's so many games that for the moment are my favorite game. That, That's that, that just comes out. So this is like... Uh, we spent what's the, what's the recording day? This is this is all true as of <laughs> August sixteenth. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, all right. You so, asked me on the seventeenth. I might have a totally different list for you. Yeah. That's the, the problem first with this. topic uh, <laughs> we're supposed to talk about is arcade art, or you know, art packages, cabinet packages, whatever kind of, or even I mean, game art, whatever you're going for. But your top three arcade art games. Um, I guess let's, maybe we should start on third and just each give our third, each give our second, each give our first. Oh, that sounds that good. That sounds good. All right. So Arthur. Third place, yet still in your top three, your third favorite arcade art in history. Tempest. I mean, super solid. Tempest is awesome. There's crazy things coming out of this black hole in space. They're going to mess you up. and They're shooting lasers, and they're coming for you. It's fantastic. And it's, it's just, I don't know. It's one of the things that I always thought was the coolest thing about Tempest, which is a very cool game. It is a very cool game. Uh, all the free play locations right now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Vector graphics, color vector, absolutely gorgeous. I was obsessed with it because I watched Night of the Comet when I was a little kid. Um, beautiful, like, on the on the art level, it's just got everything. It's got explosions. It's got brilliant colors. Like, it's got a, it, it's not a muted color scheme, but it's only, like, three colors in there. Just great use of art. Well, the nice thing, because it's a color vector game, and... And, and I want to I I say, like, you guys hit the new tab button, because you're going to want it for this one. <laughs> right, go <laughs> keep ahead. Us, keep us going in the background. You don't need to see go this beautiful studio, Tempest even though it's beautiful. <laughs> and, and we're going we're gonna to be looking at some art. You can but, see it so well now, courtesy well, of these light diffusers. Mm -hmm. What I always thought was really nice about Tempest Art is it actually felt like it connected to the game. Because they had the different yes. kind of... Because it feels like it's all going to that, that black hole, that center. Yeah. Um, and just kind of like line art on the cabinet that then kind of translates really well to that beautiful color vector line drawing uh, game. So yeah, no, I... That's, that's a good one. Chris, what is your third place arcade art game? Okay, my, mine is going to be one that used to be on the floor. That uh, it, The reason I, I'm going to say it is because it inspired my imagination. It is the Spy Hunter cabinet art. That's good. That's um, a good one. Has the, uh, the, the titular Spy Hunter there. It's got the car, the fake Mach 5, the fake James <laughs> Bond car, the fake everything car. It's, it's a fake DeLorean. It's, it's somehow every car... That you wanted to drive in the 80s but couldn't there it is in all of its glory it's got the cool dude with his with his side view of the gun right and then here's the real th reason that it's on this list in the background there's like planes and helicopters and boats and all kinds of stuff and like none of that's in the game right, right? it had my imagination going wild i can't tell you how many extra hours as a kid i tried playing spy hunter just to get to that Helicopter. Where <laughs> you is it? You never get the helicopter, but at least I don't know about the Plane? arcade because I would die really early on. But you could get to the boat in the NES version. Correct. Correct. So, so that and that that was the breadcrumb trail that had me continually going for the helicopter, continuing to fight for the airplane. <laughs> I might go home and try it some more. Maybe they didn't go. I know they played that game for like twenty five hours straight, but like. Maybe, Maybe they didn't just didn't go, go long enough. enough. The, the airplane level, it has to be there. It has to be there. And I'm inspired because that art is so inspiring. I think the cool thing about Spy Hunter was the cabinet design itself uh, with the flat front that it had. 
So you kind of had to stick your head slightly into it. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, you everything else was gone. Everything you was James into Bondy. the game, and you were just playing the game because your head just stuck in just slightly. And it was genius cabinet design because there's not a lot of cabinets that are like that. There's this flat front, and then the monitor's a little sunken, so you have to look into it. Is, is um, uh, Gyrus that way? I, I feel, it feels... No, Gyrus is kind of interesting because it's flat front, but then it has, like, this one you could actually stick your head in. Gyrus, it has the plexi that blocks your head from being able to go in. Oh, um, man. But Gyrus is all about, you know, the speaker design. So. That Spy Hunter cab always sucked me in. Every every place we stopped on the trip from Shreveport to to, to Dallas and back and forth again. Ty, so many Tyler Spy Hunters have been played by me. <laughs> so uh, what, do you, it, what do you got for us, Corn? It oh, used sorry. to be everywhere, too, and that was a really neat thing about it. Oh, yeah. And I, I, we've spoke about it numerous times why it's not on the free play floor because it is the biggest tech note generator because people right. don't. Right. The, the don't, left trigger is broken. They don't read the control scheme. They don't read the little notes all over the game that say, please, guys, it's not broken. Just play a little bit longer. You'll figure out why. It, yes. Uh, no, actually, that's interesting because my top, my number three arcade art was Gyrus, actually. Oh, um, my bad. Because, oh, cool. So so yeah no uh, I think that the art package on it um, and we'll get to some other stuff I love about Gyrus later. But, oh I love it too. Uh, but, the, but the art <laughs> yeah. package on the side. What's, I got my popcorn ready for the other stuff. But go on. What's really great is Gyrus is you know an all time great game um, and just the entire design of it. Uh, Second was, circle shooter on the on the list was almost flawless. But the nice thing was that like you always knew what cabinet used to be a gyrus because no one would ever paint over the side art. No, the like, side art's awesome. If you, if, <laughs> even if you look at our Gal's Panic 2 that we take to the, the conventions and stuff that we use as kind of a goofy game, that's a converted gyrus, and you know immediately that it's gyrus because you see that side art, the red and the yellows, and the, and you just immediately know what a gyrus was. And I thought they just crushed it with the, the art package um, and everything, really. I mean, gyrus is one of the best games ever. All right, ours are, though, number two. Number on two, your ar- arcade art list. Uh, the the side of her final fight, where you have Cody looking over his shoulder at a bunch of thugs that are backing off as uh, Hugo Andore is lying on the ground with blood splattered everywhere in a pipe that apparently Cody dropped and his blood dripping from Hugo his. Hugo is clearly dead. <laughs> He's <laughs> clearly <laughs> dead. There's a reason Cody went to prison, and that's it right there. This artwork tells a story. And that story is that Cody is not a man to be trifled with. <laughs> He's standing with, mess with Hugo's him blood dripping off of his his fist. Like, that is... Wow! <laughs> well, what's really cool about Final Fight is that it was, you know, classically, it's just a conversion arcade. Um, and so many people still know, like, the distinctive cabinet art that it had just because, A, I mean, it was everywhere. It was a yeah. very popular conversion. But also, it really, you know, besides being a great game, you also just, like... It, you were really kind of engrossed in what Final Fight was. You wanted to get into it and, and play it just kind of based on that the very simple art package. Also, it's totally ridiculous, and you, the game's great, so that was good, too. <laughs> All right, Chris, art game number two. Our game number two would be the X-Men six-player arcade beat-em-up, which I absolutely adore. The, uh, the Colossus roaring aside, uh, the art, the art is... is it's not modern of that day. It isn't. It it's more like a, a late seventies throwback. Like it's it's not Mohawk Storm. It's like this weird late seventies motif. You got Dazzler on there. You got a giant, giant haired uh, uh, Shadow Cat in that that uh, that version of it. Um, everything about that cabinet, I absolutely love the color scheme. The way the 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 throwback characters look, and also the little panels that say you know. This is this is a uh, um, Nightcrawler. It gives and the backstory, right? Yeah. It's right there on the cabinet. Uh, I spent so many hours. Again, both both of the arts I've mentioned had my imagination running wild, and most of what I know about the X Men actually like revolves around what I learned on that cabinet. You know about uh, Cyclops having my my exact like dimensions of six three and one eighty five pounds. That's why I cosplayed as him uh, last Halloween. Um, you know, every everything about that cabinet, I just absolutely adore, and it belongs in its own universe. Maybe it's a little bit of a cheat because it's based on a comic. Clearly, it's got its own art sources, but they really killed it with that. I think the interesting thing about Six Player X Men is that it's clear, like the art design on it was like true pros saying, "This is the available space we have. We want to fill it. We don't want to, you know, overdo it, but we want it to feel like, you know, a game you're going to see, you're going to love, you're going to walk up, and then yeah, like using the little spot because it's 
the character bios are printed on this huge piece of glass yeah. that separates from the two monitors that make up the big play field. It's big, um, it's colorful, it grabs my attention, it makes me want to play an arcade game, and it made me want to learn about the X-Men. So it was a hit on all possible levels for me. Well, yeah, when we're talking about these games, um, all of them so far are on free play floors. Or have been, um, yeah. Spy Hunter's and, case. Right, and, or have been. And the neat thing about, or not neat thing, the worst thing about X-Men is at free play, um, there's there's no stakes, right? <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's my it's it's seriously something that like keeps me up at night is having six player X Men outs and knowing that it's not quite as good as the experience should be. Um, because as a kid, I remember seeing a six player X Men at some arcade and walking up and having six of us all around it playing it and all of us you know doing everything we could to get the very last drop out of whatever quarters we had. Whatever you know, like if we had two dollars, that this game was gonna get all two dollars, and we were just gonna sit there and see how far we could get. Um, and that's lost at free play, right? Because you can just keep getting more credits. Yeah, and you just it's credit spam and you keep going. Yeah. At, 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 uh, I believe it's quarter.fun, is that right? Yeah. That's the home of Arcade Anywhere Project, which is one of our little side ventures um, where we are putting arcade, classic arcade cabinets in uh, local DFW businesses that, that are a part of that. And so that cabinet that is a free play cabinet that's at Alamo Drafthouse Richardson, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I play it every single time exactly one credit yeah it's a little bit more fun and you like, know what i never even finished my credit but i have a blast doing it right i usually I leave it parked somewhere for some kid to take over and die in an instant but i, <laughs> I absolutely love that game and i love um all the konami beat-em-ups that i can recall well yeah we and we put we try to put one at each at simpsons or at turtles or even yeah. x-men we have out right now um at armadillo Ella works like it's I don't know. It's how the games were meant to be played, so it's a lot of fun. But yeah, so I good. Mean, six player so X Men, all time great uh, art package. All right, so my second is Burger Time. Burger Time. Almost entirely because of the cabinet shape, right? All right, you've like, given me this speech before, and every single time I have to eat a hamburger after <laughs> we leave the podcast. Well, so. I mean, so the the cool thing about Burger Time is that was, I mean, a custom cut cabinet just for that game and they used every little bit of the uh, cut to make sure it was you know as iconic as it is because you've got his little chef's at yeah. causing these yeah. kind of little yeah, bubbles the- <laughs> uh, and it, it's just amazing like uh, you always know when you find a burger time, not because of the gyrus thing where they'll, they leave the colors on, but because it still has the little the bubbles shape, on yeah. it. <laughs> and you're just like, that, that's a burger time. That's obviously a burger time. And what I also really love about burger times, various art packages, if you look at it, like how the protagonist looks in the art changes like three times on the cabinet. All the enemies are kind of randomly thrown in there, but it's all kind of it all kind of works together to make you just, you know, one, you know that you're about to play Burger Time, and if you know what Burger Time is, you know um, the game you're getting into. Uh, but no, I, I really think that I think it goes an extra mile when you're cutting the cabinet right to, oh my goodness, to, to yes. make sure you're you're selling your game extra hard. Um, well, I also like the the retro style of that because like, it's it's got a cartoonish art. Right. It looks it looks dated, but it looks like it's a stylish cartoon of that era. Whereas, you know, when you when you have a game that's trying to be as modernly cool and hip as it can possibly be, you know, think of, of the art package for Madden 2000 whatever and how how very, <laughs> very real and it's in the game it's supposed to be. That dates itself badly. Well, I, I read an article one time that was talking about Burger Time um, as being, though, like, if modern... Like, if you had all of the knowledge of, like, modern graphic designers, and you had all the knowledge of modern coders, and they said, go make an early 80s game, they were like, there's a decent chance you'll end up with Burger Time because it's themed so perfect for the 80s. And it just is exactly what you think about when you think about what you're going to find in, like, an arcade. And especially nowadays, it's exactly what you expect in a retro arcade. Yeah, a true classic. Thoughts on Burger Time? I'm hungry. Yeah, (laughs) get that pepper out. No, Burger Time, it just looks great. It looks like the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons of the early 80s. And that's exactly what they're shooting for, and they're good at doing it. So It does not make me want to eat a hot dog, but I guess he's the villain, so it's not supposed to make me want to eat a hot dog. (laughs) No. And the sad thing is, egg on a burger is delicious. Just throwing that out there. Right. (laughs) But that guy's not having any of that. Deliciously evil. (laughs) He's watching out for your health, your cholesterol. So now we're going to Arthur's number one. Uh, arcade art. Number right? one. In, in I his don't opinion. think that I'm biased by this. Is, is Gradius. Right behind us, we have a giant poster given to us by James? I don't remember. I think, yeah, I mean, I think James gave I, it to I us. I do think James, actually, from Denton, gave it to us. Yeah. 
Well, anyway, I think that that artwork is just phenomenal. The 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 shoot the core spaceship coming straight at the screen, uh, all the lasers everywhere. The ship valiantly uh, heading in to fight a much larger target. It very well satisfies you know all the things that the game is about. At the same time, it's just really good looking science fiction artwork from the era. Yeah, it looks uh, it has a very manga uh, anime look to it as yeah. well. It's it really awesome. Awesome. Is there a manga or anime like before? It's, I'm sure there has been one in 1983 or whatever that was no based on Gradius. No idea about that, but, but it, it looks to me like some of the ships from Harlock Saga or or a Battleship Yamato, but a little bit modernized, I guess. Either way, uh, I had this on a PC Engine 2 card forever and thought, that hey, this looks really cool. How come the American games didn't have artwork but just instead had text with a... Uh, the name of the game on it. To, yeah, just, just Gradius on the side, yeah. Well, it, it didn't got in America. That's why I had the Japanese one. And that was the first PC Engine game that I imported. And I just thought, this is awesome. <laughs> and the NES version, yeah, it's the same artwork also. But it has the, the NES classic Konami look where they cut off a third of it and have it fade away with a couple of lines of the further outstretched drawing. And it just it looks way better on this than it does on the NES box art. But yeah, I think Gradius is just amazing looking. I, I can't disagree yeah, with no, you. That's, that Fun is... game too. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, Delp. All right, All so. All time number one. I, I'm gonna go with one that's, that's recent in my mind. I didn't really understand <laughs> this game until you guys were were moving it to, to one of the, the labs or hidden bases. I can't keep track anymore. It's a classic <laughs> pinball table. And uh, there is so much happening here. It's a bit risque. Um, I'm not sure if I want to know what the politics of it are or not. I can just say it is Gorgar. It is today's uh, October 16th close crop, <laughs> and nobody is getting it because there's so <laughs> much happening on this marquee artwork. It's G O R G A R, if you haven't heard of it. Gorgar Pinball. And look at the marquee, and there is some insanity happening. Arthur, please describe what you see in front of you. It looks to me like a... If you say the wrong thing, we're firing you. Go. <laughs> Barbarian in a helmet is laying down an Amazonian woman <laughs> to be sacrificed to Satan, who is standing right behind him or possibly fed to a giant snake, while an evil shadow lord and another snake and an axeman and tons of bones and stuff are around. So, like, stuff is going on here. No, I mean... It is... It is going down. To whatever be fair, it is. it's almost like it's almost not fair to pick like a late seventies, early eighties pinball because you look oh, at some, a lot of them, some yeah. of these yeah, back glasses and you're just like, this is just like bizarre. Why would they just and they there's they, so much and happening. they had so much space that they just kept filling it in. They would just yeah. be like, keep drawing, keep drawing, keep drawing. <laughs> I mean, but like even stuff like Future Spa, um, which is you know, it, oh, I thought Future about Spa. <laughs> that is the weirdest. <laughs> right. Like, like there's guys in iron lungs. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And there's all kinds of 70s well, 70s mustache beard combinations. Right. Bizarre pornography kind yeah, of stuff so going on. Like, or, I mean, at least actors s- from porn. Scramble on the menu. Right. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the reason that I know a lot of the, these artworks, because I didn't really pay attention to them when I was a kid. I was too busy into the game, right? Is uh, our little close crop competition. Shout outs to Jason Palmer for inventing that. Yeah. Um, Every Friday at 10 a.m., I post a different little close-cropped picture from one of our classic arcade games and uh, see how long it takes for everybody to give up and just have Chris Wilson tell them what it actually is. Um, I wonder if Chris Wilson's going to get this one. I don't know. I don't know. So far, it's so far, no one right has. Yeah, I mean, Pinball it's, might be a little bit out of his normal right. wheelhouse. It's, it's in the past right now, so somebody has probably gotten it. You can, right. you can go find it. But it, we do the hashtag close crop all the time on Facebook every single week, and that's today's. And what I have is a picture of a skeleton right. in the background in a chair. And let me tell you, this is fully like rendered and designed, and it is a beautiful piece of art. And it is in like the far back, far back, far back part of the, the background, and it looks perfect. And I close cropped it, and it looks like it could <gasps> be from its own dang game. Andy Gay got it 15 minutes ago. Congratulations yeah, to it. Andy Gay. You actually got it right. It's Gorgar. 
and it's so far in the background that you could never see it because there is absolute insanity happening in the foreground. So well, it's kind of interesting too because when you said you're taking a photo of Gorgar, um, I thought, oh wow, some pinball guy is just going to knock because pinball guys love Gorgar, obviously, yeah. because oh, yeah. it's so like I mean, it's awesome. It, it's actually a pretty cool game, and also it looks absurd. Um, <laughs> so you right. won't forget it, except there's so much happening that you'll forget parts of it because it's a needle in a haystack. So I'm here. I'm here now for my number one Haystack game. Insanity. I'm going to um, inject a little bit of controversy here because this is famously one of the least loved uh, art packages that exists on arcades. And I'm going with, and I, I actually always love it because to me it added actual story to a game that has none. The Midway Space Invaders cabinet. Oh, that's a good one. I actually, I love everything that's going on there. I love the weird guys on the site throwing missiles down. I love the backlash. I love the way the art. I mean, like, I love every part of it. And to me, when I first started playing, because, you know, Space Invaders, obviously, a very primitive, primitive game. Like, mm -hmm. they, there's not a lot going on on the screen. It's pixels, you're shooting missiles. Blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, very, very simple. But to me, somehow, seeing that artwork always made me think, like, these are the bad guys. These are right. uh, this is who I'm fighting. Well, they're dark. You don't see anything. They just have like eyes, right? They clearly it's... look pretty evil. Well, what yeah. I really love, I mean, the stencil work on it was just beautiful. Um, and I thought, always thought it was really cool that, you know, way back in the '70s, this is early, early arcades. They get a license and they say, "All right, we're going to make a cool looking cabinet." And mm -hmm. I think it does. I think it looks Absolutely. like a really cool looking cabinet. Um, but it has, you know, it, it's received some flack because it's a little uh, maybe stylized for what the game is bringing you. Almost kind of like the Atari 2600 criticisms, although the Atari 2600 box art, of course, was some of the best box art that ever existed, but had no connection to the game, many of the games whatsoever. I well, mean, we, like, can, we can exist in a realm without that now that we have played all the games for 30 years and just <laughs> admire the, the art for what it is. And but it yeah, is. I mean, I always loved the... I mean, one, the camera design was really cool um, because you're looking into a reflected glass and, you know, it uses the different... Um, pieces of plastic and everything to yeah. add color um but also i just it it always was a, you know it's a complete package of a game and i always it blows me away when i see these selling for five or six hundred dollars because i'm like i'm gonna buy every single space invaders because right, it's, it's art. living art it there's, has to be worth there's more. plenty of them <laughs> right yeah they did make quite a few um yeah. all right so that was the uh number one number two number three artwork um our lists we each made them i think we all did pretty good um no nothing too surprising in there all right so now we're gonna do top three arcade either sound design or soundtracks um and we're gonna start with arthur again number three top art or no, top sound or soundtrack from an arcade game uh top sound i gotta go with punch out that game right there has a really nice sound wow we're gonna it be is. controversial i see <laughs> oh, i mean it's loud right? and the bartenders don't really like it being right there it's repetitive right because you get the huh Huh, huh. Uppercut, uppercut. I mean, uppercut. Think, body blow. When that game came out, that's a pretty good sound. <laughs> no, no, no. It actually is really, really nice. I mean, it's very distinctive too. So you automatically want to see what's happening wherever that sound's coming from. So. I can certainly hear the the theme song in my head right now. <laughs> is the theme song even in the arcade? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I never you, hear that. You don't just hear it. uppercut. You don't hear it because it only happens when we turn on the game. Right. Uh oh. Um, so if you're ever there when they turn on the games, you'll hear it. But then once they get it all set up, it no longer plays. I would give honorable mention to Cubert mm. because that when he falls, oh, the, the knocker. The, yeah. yeah, it's it's but. literally just a pinball solenoid in there that right. goes. Yep, um, that's great. <laughs> but I, I mean, it, it really works well with you know Cuber going. Mm. I, I can say most of my games end with me intentionally diving <laughs> right. off the side yeah. just to hear the knocker. So yeah, I'm I'm with you there. All right, Chris, number three on your list of top three arcade soundtracks or sound design. Yeah, whatever. give me give me uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Mm -hmm. The yeah. uh, the soundtrack is great throughout. Um, right from the get go, when you hit start, you, you're you're. You're some creepy atmospheric music as uh, as your girlfriend gets kidnapped by Satan, who somehow makes his second appearance on the podcast. And uh, <laughs> what an interesting day! <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, the 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 soundtrack goes from there. It's iconic. You can't listen to that first level of Ghosts and Goblins without being transported to right where you were the first five trillion times you died on that game. <laughs> and if the music wasn't so good, I don't think we would keep playing it. Likely, yeah, I mean, no. It's a really great game, too. I mean, though, I mean, if the great thing about that game is when you die, you feel like you know exactly what you did wrong. Yes. Um, so that's the, the, the like mark of a good game because you're going to then 
play it again because you want to improve and get better. And well, and it's also one of those games that's had sequel after sequel after sequel. And again, you know, the sound design was really good because they keep using the same right. uh, songs and stuff over and over again in different, you know, remixed forms. All right, my third place arcade soundtrack. I have like a seven way tie because I'm punting. Um, all right, <laughs> I first picked. I went through like every Williams game. Mm-hmm. Um, like Joust, Sinistar, the sound design on all of those was amazing. Yeah, I, I can see why you're going uh, seven ways here. Well, I mean, the real thing is they all use very similar sound boards, right? Mm-hmm. So they all have kind of a uniform sound. It literally is the um, same board, right? Right, yeah. 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 Um, and, I mean, yeah, there's like very minor variations, but your your sound processing is identical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but, you know, like in Joust, when you die and you don't immediately hit the button and you wait for it, and it starts getting, and it starts getting like fever pitch. I, I mean, all of those were really amazing. But what I actually picked was it was the one that I wanted to make sure I was focusing a little bit on third on soundtracks. I went with Third Strike um, because that is an all time great arcade. And so I, I didn't grow up with Third Strike either. So mm-hmm. most of my Third Strike experience is at free play mm-hmm. and going from like Street Fighter two or the the earlier fighting games and all of a sudden having like sound design paid attention to like the soundtracks and you got songs and stuff. Mm-hmm. I remember that like just being there entranced with it. Like I just wanted to sit there and listen and play Third Strike. You know, and also the art's beautiful and everything. But it's, right. it's got, like, the whole package in terms of art design and sound design. So, I don't know. I went with Third Strike, number three, feel, all-time great soundtracks. And I feel like it's it's got an original soundtrack, too. It's got a very hip-hop-inspired right, soundtrack. Right, yes. But, like, I'm not putting Street Fighter Two on the list. Maybe one of you guys are. But <laughs> that, that's, that's straight knockoff music. Like, it's it's right. not its own music. As great as the Ken stage is, it's Mighty Wings. As great as Guile's theme is, it's clearly from uh, for Traveler, two, two Square, or something like that. Um, yeah, there's, those are some straight rip-offs of there. Um, Journey, Be Good to Yourself is the ending theme. So, so I, I don't think Street Fighter II's great soundtrack belongs to it. Third Strike soundtrack absolutely belongs to Third Strike, and every Third Strike player knows it because they've they've <laughs> listened to it a million times. <laughs> right. And like I, I can't deal, I cannot deal with NBC Two's uh, take, take You for, for a ride. ride. Oh my goodness, I've had so much. <laughs> no, 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 no. I understand that you played the game a lot, so you have an affinity <laughs> for it. But man, I've heard the first two seconds. It is of really kind of repetitive. The, the third strike, the thing that I like most about the soundtrack is every stage you have uh, three different – you start with you know the theme of the stage for the first round. Mm-hmm. The second round changes a little, adds in some variation, usually cuts back on the, the melody or whatever and puts in more drum and bass. Then the third, the third round, assuming you get to a final round, has a more tension-filled re- a rendition of the first, first part of the song. So it gives you a theme. It changes it up. It turns it back but with more, more emphasis on, well, you know, stuff serious now. And it really works well for playing a fighting game in that that sort of circumstance. What's going on in the Alina song? Beats got- them, beats them, beats, beats them, beats them, beats, beats them, beats them, beats, <laughs> beats in my head while an elephant has been mooning me for 20 years. I, 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 like, I don't know why she's got bees in her hair. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> they keep telling me. It's, it's still a catchy song because every single time I'm, I'm leaving Arlington after a Third Strike Thursday, oh. it's just drumming in my head. Yeah, uh, Elena's stage I think is the weakest of the stages just because it's it, it still looks good, but there's less animated animation in it and there's less details. I mean, it's, it's in Africa. The music it's got is the fine. big sunset. Yeah, I, it's, actually, yeah, I it's a pretty a good stage. I got, I got my lighter up. But if you compare it to the stage that she had from Second Impact and New Generation, never played it. Well, we'll have to settle that with uh, Tuesday Night Fights pretty soon. We will. Uh, yeah, it's an incredible good stage where they're on like a river fighting on a bridge, and then uh, the bridge falls, then it's a whole new stage in the next level. I'm like, well, this is kind of disappointing because of how good the stage was in uh, in the original version versus how it's kind of static in Third Strike. But music is really good though. So what do you what do you got for us on your number uh, two on your list of best two? arcade sounds or sound design? I don't know. Like I, I'm kind of in a fighting game mood, I guess, at the moment. <laughs> uh, my second one, I picked Garo Mark of the Wolves, which uh, unlike Street Fighter Two, only stole one of its songs. Robert Miles' Children is Rock Howard, the child of Keith Howard, <laughs> his theme song. So, but yeah, I think that that's the best Neo Geo sound design. Of any game, and it's really funny. I've never noticed any of the music, and I played the game a lot. All I ever, because what I always say is the dumb character announcer, like that gets stuck in my Rock head so much. Howard, right? Versus or, Kush Nude, 
But <laughs> well, and, and my son will run around the house and go, and I'm like, yes, this is so much fun. And that's it. That's all we ever <laughs> do is run around and make fun of Kushnud Butt and stuff like that. Oh, but why wouldn't you? His name is Kushnud Butt. It's a, a big, long running joke in our house. It's kind of like naming your kid Sue. <laughs> and thus he becomes a karate expert. Right. All right, Chris. <laughs> number two, hmm. sound design. Uh, I don't. I, I. I don't want to go to the same game twice, but I. I, I have to. <laughs> it's. It's again my favorite. It's, it's X Men, like. Yeah, that, that, I mean that 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 mutant. Uh, the the song that they play on Magneto stage is just man. I can go it. I can just just. It's in my head all the time. You gotta turn off the Colossus roar. <laughs> Stop playing with the Colossus roar. <laughs> Enjoy the game. Enjoy the music behind it. Enjoy. <laughs> X Men, welcome to die. I I, I can re- recall the the whole opening scene, you know, word for word. You know, in the twenty first century, evil mutants med- led by Magneto aim to destroy the world. Like like it's it's so good and it's so like iconic in my mind that like it's it's dominating my mind right now. I gotta remember remind remind me that it's a modern game. I don't have it written down, but uh, my 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 number one is gonna be a modern game. But like. Man, the the incredible uh, j- design job they did on that on that game was 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 really awesome. So, give me X Men again. No, and I it's mean, also going to be my favorite puzzle game later when we get to the top three <laughs> puzzle games. All of those Konami's really kind of um, were really good at making sure that the theme came through and the sound. But I do mm-hmm. think absolutely X Men was Nin- Ninja Turtles as well. But Ninja Turtles once again, like Street Fighter Two, was off the 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 yeah, classic arcade right, series. Right. So I had Uncle Hilt Phil's voice and all that stuff. But uh but X Men once again just just murdered it. Alright, so my number two our top arcade sound design. I actually almost went with Space Invaders and then I said no. <laughs> <laughs> like it, just what? literally two sounds too. But it's so dude. good. Like I don't And they, they didn't with, even change the with the extra speaker going dun. Dun, right, but dun, that was a glitch. Dun. It's beautiful. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> You're not wrong. The, the fact that Space Invaders worked out that way is one of the happiest video game things I've ever learned. I mean, they didn't speed it up. Well, the speed up was yeah, just a glitch. Right, but you're right. It's a war drum happening. It's perfect. Yeah, it keeps you driving. But anyways, that's not actually what I picked. I picked another one that's going to be controversial. Zevius. Zevius. I don't know that I can recall that. I don't remember the music, but I know that the name. Let's, let's go here. Let me try to pull it up. Sounds like an adjective to describe so, the game so, that you're playing. So Zevius. Uh, so said it's not. We're online. not talking about Gradius. No. Zevius. Let's see. Oh, oh, I know it. It's the one where you can bomb the ground. Yes, yeah, yeah. I remember. The original scrolling and I, shooter. And I cannot recall the music at all. Wait, this is it. But this is the NES, I think, version. <laughs> Man, I don't we know. could have such a such a chip tune tune delight with all this. <laughs> Oh, there you go, yeah. I do recall that. So, uh, a lot of people hate it because it's a little... Um, the grading at that point? Uh, yeah, they, they kind of think it's a little too repetitive. Uh-huh. Uh, but hold on, let me see if I can pull up. Well, I want to show them Marvel vs. Capcom 2 because <laughs> that, that song is repetitive. Here, let's see if this has some... Yeah, so I mean that's basically it. It all of these are emulated though, so it doesn't do the justice that it right, needs. Right. It doesn't. It's not using the original sound processor, but at least yeah. it sounds better in our new studio. Right. That was. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean Zevius to me was really, really kind of amazing because I always thought I felt like a hero going into it. Um, so uh, yeah, that's Zevius. All right, number one sound design, Arthur. Well, I gotta point to a single specific song more than anything else. Uh, Favorite arcade song coming up. Yes. Uh, so the Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter version of Captain America theme, I think, is maybe the best like arcade song I've ever heard in my life. I love the Q sound uh, sound engine they have. I think it you know that, great. that whole series like of, of Q sound things. Like I yeah. remember dominating the arcades. That and is Mortal Kombat one a Q sound game? Because I, I remember that big think boom. So. Mm. No, Midway had their own super bassy, yeah. really really good audio. Definitely. Yeah. So those those early '90s like fighting the original fighting games just really really nailed it. Anyway, uh, I queued it up so. Yeah, I, I love awesome. the the intro to it, and then the song itself uh, is good as well. The intro was not in the original version. Of da, 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 what part? And anyway, it, I think it just sounds great. So there you go. All right, number one. Chris. Number one. I like I like I was saying, I'm going modern ish. 
Um, these guys really killed it. They're friends of free play. The Sky Cursor soundtrack. Now, not the goosh, goosh, Sky Cursor that we can't, can't, <laughs> bum, bum. Sky we can't get rid of that, right? That one's, that one's been taunting us because you can't actually take it off of a track mode to, to have it not yell at you that way. The actual music is incredible in Sky Cursor, and they did a great job with the first three stages, which were the release of Sky Cursor that we got in our, our arcade. And then later they released a fourth stage with a father brainish type character at the right. end. It was it was it was amazing. The art blows up on you. It's incredible. But that music is so good that my my adrenaline is pumping every single time I play Sky Cursor. And most people have never played Sky Cursor because it's it's an indie game that got released in 2017. It's you have arcades. to come, <laughs> Yeah, you have to come to Free Play Richardson to play it. And I recommend you do. And I recommend you go to stage four and enjoy the glory that is mission four of Sky Cursor. I don't know what the name of that song is. I don't know who the actual sound designer is because I'm not staring at my computer. But like whoever it is, kudos to you because that blows it up it's an incredible arcade uh sound package uh chiptune set and uh you're my number one arcade music sound design ever all right so i'm really happy that no one picked this because i thought for sure this would be gone (laughs) i picked it in the art section too best sound design of all time i think is not even close gyrus gyrus is fantastic um i Playing that game. I mean, it's literally a classic. Right. Playing that game is, is so fun. Well, what most people don't realize it, it, is it keeps going, too. <laughs> like, right? It's got a No, it's a got long, a bunch of different songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, one, they, they designed this, the cabinet really well with the extra mm-hmm. speakers and everything. Um, uh, but yeah, no, when I when I just, when you hit that start button and it plays that kind of, you know, your little intro where your ship is shooting up and mm-hmm. gosh. Uh, I, I think forget that, it's, it's a it's a classic old tune. I, I forget. It's fir- Beethoven or something, right? Where it goes no, like, it's a it's box Toccata and Fugue. Yeah, something. that is there it. You yeah. There you go. Um, and it, I mean, it, you, it starts off with that, and you're in, right? And then all of a sudden, you're you're like fighting for your life, but the whole time that music just keeps playing, and I, I think that that was. Um, Really, really impressive too with the technology they had at the time and everything. Like, um, like I think Zevius is an all-time great, but like comparing those two, it's like a whole nother like world for Zevius. Um, and I think it was. I think that kind of also started, at least. I mean, both Zevius and Gyrus kind of started that trend of shmups. We're gonna they're gonna start focusing on what the player's listening to um, during the game because. Uh, Shmups in general are, you know, you you want something that's kind of taking you out of the game, uh, so that you can kind of like fo- I don't know even know how to describe it, but you like when you're when you're playing a shmup, you don't want the world interacting with you, right? You mm-hmm. want you want that soundtrack to take over your mind so that you can focus on the game. I guess is what I'm getting at. And it's got to be up tempo as well, like you get because you're you're moving so quickly that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, and, and nowadays I think you know shmups have all sorts of really really cool soundtracks and. I think you know it started from those two. Uh, really cool, really awesome what they're doing with the technology too, because those are old games. All right, so those were our top three sound or sound design soundtracks out of arcade games. Now we're gonna. I pick... felt like if I would have gone Revolution X, that would have been a cop out. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also great. Um, Shout all right, to you, Aerosmith. Top three at, on the floor right now: Brawler, Beat 'Em Up, whatever we want to call them. Um, just, just. I'm just, not gonna. I'm just gonna not say X Men. Honorable mention X Men for me. <laughs> Extend the genre as far as you want, um, because like I guess that's something I don't. I don't fully understand. Like games like uh, Castle of Doom, which we had, or um, uh, Magic Sword, mm-hmm. and uh, even kind of like um, the the crawler type games like Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all call them beat 'em ups, but they feel a little different than like your straight Final Fights or your Konami, like your um, turtles and stuff. I don't, yeah. but, but I guess we're, for this purpose, everything is fair game. Just whatever you consider a brawler or beat em up. Let's go. Arthur, number three on your list. Double Dragon. I have a photo of myself beating that game <laughs> when I was uh, turning seven at my birthday party. And it's, I don't know, one of my favorite video gaming memories just playing Double Dragon. A couple... Not a couple, but a while ago, right when I started, you, you were uh, eBaying off a of Double Dragon. And I'm like, I may want that. I don't know. And so I borrowed it and played it through, you know, under the guise of a, a test. And I'm like, yeah, it, it doesn't quite hold quite the magic <laughs> as when it created this wonderful genre. I'm really happy that I played it, but I think I'm better off not owning it. 
But right. I still love the game, and it brings me joy to see it on the floor. Well, and it's an all-time classic, right? And, and p- plenty of people play it and have a great time. Good uh, music, too. My biggest thing with it is is kind of comparing it to uh, what came not long after. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Um, like, was Double Dragon's like, cool, but Final Fight is like, uh, wow, right, right. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll get to that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Chris, give number me, three on your brawler beat All right, list. G- g- give me Ninja Turtles one. It's the uh, it's in uh, what we got? Which free play we got it in? Uh, I, didn't I'm, I'm didn't right now. I think Turtles in Time is at Richardson and um, Arlington right now, and didn't has the original team in T and free play or uh, Alamo. Alamo Draft House Richardson, Richardson, and that's where and, I play it primarily. And is, Lakewood uh, Brewery. In yeah, Garland. every time I go see a new release, I go see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I put one single quarter into that gorgeous TMNT machine, and I go to town, and it is so good. And, um, you know, it, it, you can beat it in one credit. It's crazy hard. It's a token muncher. It's unfair until you know what you're doing, and then you can just blaze through that game. You can dial your own score. You can... Um, not save April O'Neil from Uncle Phil. She he gets by you every single time. Blasts out the the uh, the window. Um, I don't know who's driving the turtles van after the uh, the Bebop and Rocksteady stage. I, mean, I always assumed April because I assumed it was April too. Leonard was kidnapped at that point. Wasn't it? No, no, no. She, he gets kidnapped because she drives it. I'm assuming she off the bridge. Yeah. There's one curve in the road. I mean, I. I Whatever. Watch, watch out. Boom. Off the road. <laughs> it's a great game. The plot might not make sense, but I love it so much. It's my number three. Well, and yeah, I mean, talking about sound design, that one really just captures the feeling of Turtles. I mean, it had a lot to build on, but yeah, it, it really did did feel that way. All right. Then that's... Oh, hey. Yeah, I didn't pick Turtles for my third. My, I was leaving yours. I know what it is. Well, no. My number three is actually AVP. Um, oh, yeah. Alien vs. Predator. Capcom. So good. Um, that game's incredible. Yep. It's just awesome. Um, I have no nostalgic like connection to it. I uh, so it, like in one on one hand, it's like a totally pure pick for me. It's just a totally great game, and I can play it and recognize how great of a game it is. Um, but on the other hand, I have no like childhood connection like I might have with the Konami stuff, um, which is really weird. Um, but that was kind of how it was. I think everywhere, right? The Konamis were dominant compared. I mean, the others existed, and you could find them sometimes, but. Those darn Turtles, Simpsons, X Men, I mean, those are pretty much the big three. Um, just were so strong and so powerful. But yeah, AVP, just a great game. Um, just really good. I, I mean, and that's literally all I can say about it. Yeah, and you, you can do like uh, fighting game moves in it. Like there's there's a little bit of technique yeah, to it. Yeah, it's got great combos and crazy movement options, and it's a lot of fun to play. Yeah, fighting games are always intrinsically related because. Um, Final Fight, which probably is going to be on one of our lists later, is is <laughs> Street Fighter Two before Street Fighter Two was named. Um, like it's you're playing a fighting game with an overpowered character, so they're very very related. Um, but most of the time, with a game like like Turtles or whatever, it's it's one button. Just press the button, do your attack, keep doing your attack, jump and attack. There's, oh, yeah. a, there's a second or third attack, attack. Jump attack. Jump. Just do yeah. crisscross and <laughs> right. Over so you and basically over. have three moves. You're playing a fighting game character that's got three broken moves, and you keep going. Um, but with AVP in particular, and and some other games like it, like you can actually like pick up weapons and do little combos and and combinate. Like it's got some meat to it. Like if you want to keep playing, go back, replay it, learn a new technique, learn a new character. It's all right there for you. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it, yeah, it's a lot of fun to play. It's a lot of fun to make it through the game. Um, it's a great experience. All right, Arthur, number two, Final Fight is my choice there for number go. two. Yeah. <laughs> a solid choice yeah it is Final it's a great, a great game. game i used to play at this gas station near my house where i you know take a couple quarters that i wouldn't spend on lunch and instead spend them on final fight mm-hmm. and i had a lot of fun with it and super nintendo was coming out and i'm really excited because one of the launch titles is final fight a friend of mine buys it it's one player it's like why why is this game one player oh well back to the gas station <laughs> he bought the game that day and we still rode our bikes to the gas station to play it in the arcade because it was that much better Anyway, so good. right now it's at Richardson, and definitely worth the time if you haven't played it. It's got an extra character that's not on the original SNES, and yeah, there's other ports of it later on. I'm not saying that there, there aren't, but it's the arcade. It's the best. Apparently it won me a trip to California. <laughs> what the heck is going on? <laughs> well, nice. Final Fight's really beautiful um, because it feels exactly like every beat-em-up should. Like, that should be the base-level beat-em-up. Like, it's... 
not, I mean, we can call it brawlers or whatever where you're shooting magic, but like Final mm-hmm. Fight to me, that feels like a true to life beat em up. Um, and it feels like kind of like the pinnacle of that genre. Um, I actually picked it, I think, number one. Let me see here. Let's see what did I. Yeah. Final <laughs> Final Fight. Well, what's really funny is I have Food Fight written here, but that's a totally different game. I meant Final Fight. Food Fight, the best brawler of all time. <laughs> so I'm talking you about it right. here first. No. It sounds like it. No, Final Fight's my all-time favorite. Um, also because it's really approachable. It's really something that you can walk up, start playing, have a really good time. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna walk away from too. Like absolutely. And, and I think about that a lot with arcade games when we're you know figuring out what's a great arcade game. A lot of the value to some arcade games is walking up having a ton of fun and then just moving on to the next game and i feel like final fight either approach like there beat the whole game then leave or there play a couple levels you know progress through the game and walk away and you're still having fun in both uh, modes i think that's that's makes for almost a perfect arcade game. well i feel like uh, arthur's number three choice of double dragon was like the prototypical right right uh, yeah uh brawler uh beat em up game right everything that double dragon did in my opinion Final Fight did perfectly or way better. Like, it's well, incredible. Yes. And, well, and you, you can play <laughs> like Double no Dragon and you're doing similar stuff that you do in Final Fight, but in Double Dragon, it feels kind of kludgy. It right. feels kind of. Eh. It feels like a tech demo compared to Final Fight. Well, Final, where Fight, Final feels Fight just fluid kills it, it on it, every possible it, way. It does seem like you're always doing Especially Hugo's it. head on the art. <laughs> no. <laughs> Poor All guy. Right. So, Chris, number two, bro. So, that was my number one. Right. Um, so, Chris, number, t- we're still on the number two. Okay, so, so mine, uh, it's, it's, it's two games. It's, it's, it got two names. So, it's Kung Fu or Kung Fu Master, depending on if you played it in the arcade or the NES. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, both of them, like, like, it's a good, uh, port on the console, the NES, but Kung Fu Master, um, the sound design is really excellent. Um, I can still remember it. The yeah, 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 yeah that you hear all the time when you're yeah. punching and kicking people in the face. It's not like a traditional brawler in where you have your opponents get knocked down to the ground and they get back up. They don't get back up when really? you uh, when you punch them in the face or do the the cool thousand point jump kick. Um, but you progress through each stage. There's five stages. It's very much inspired by Bruce Lee's uh, Game of Death. I think is what it's called. Uh, the one with uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, where he goes up through goes the levels to, of the pagoda. Yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll, yep. you'll, it'll be very familiar that. because it is levels of a pagoda, and you on each of the levels you have a unique boss. Each of the bosses are 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 well designed. Um, they're really interesting for the the early '80s era. Um, I really really like uh, Kung Fu Master. Um, hey, that's a really cool choice. Kung Fu. It's it's back in the it's back in the secret lab over there. We have like five of them somehow. Yeah, um, we, really uh, need to get one, we really need to get one out and <laughs> definitely focus on it. I mean, it's it's something that's just come up for a while, and it's a great game, so we buy them. And, and we have we have Kung Fu on the Play Choice Ten, mm-hmm. which uh, Chad Robinson back in the early days of the the community group was approaching world record status. Really, he might have gotten it. I don't even remember. He was going nuts on that game. Uh, but my my obsession with that that version of it, the Play Choice Ten version, was that you could you could beat the game, sure, and you would get a row of hearts that look like this. But if you beat the game a second time in a row, you get the hearts that would actually form into a heart. Nice. So I wanted to see that scene. So just because I wanted to see that scene, I challenged the whole arcade to uh, someone beat the game twice on stream, and, <laughs> and Chad Robinson did it in one of our very first streams. That's cool. I mean, that's really cool. One that's of awesome. the most interesting things about Kung Fu, in my opinion, is you can see all these moves that the main character. Thomas in the Nintendo version, I kind of doubt that was his original name, <laughs> is doing. Like, he's, you crouch and do that kick, and you stand and do the kick, and they look very similar to Street Fighter attacks. It's because Nishimiya was the, uh, the director of the game, and he went on to make Street Fighter, then later on went on to work for SNK to make Art of Fighting and uh, King of Fighters and a whole bunch of other games. You can sort of see the evolution of his works through these games, and they all have very similar, you know, this is what your low kick looks like in a fighting game. <laughs> I think that's really neat. No, it's really great, too, um, because just the way people keep coming to you, you knock them and they're gone, and they they come. Like, it feels really fluid when you're playing, and it feels kind of, like, natural, Um, which, especially for the era that is 1984, there weren't all that many games that felt too fluid. No, like it, 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 I think Double Dragon like defines the the beat 'em up after that. Like again, you yes, hit, you hit right. your parent, your your opponent, they fall down to the ground, they get back up again, or they don't because you hit them with a super, whatever. Um, that defines everything. Kung Fu was was Kung Fu Master was one and done, and but it was still definitely a beat 'em up. Well, and yeah, for sure. Well, in like in um, the later ones, uh, even Final Fight 
you're constantly kind of walking over to your opponent, waiting for them to get up or whatever, and then just mashing yeah, punch, 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 punch. Yeah, punch. yeah. They're, they're trying to. Um, s- whereas Kung be Fu off Master, the it was like, let's try to time it, let's try to get it right, so mm-hmm. I don't screw up and lose another life. There comes three. He's gonna guys gonna throw the knife. Right. Oh no! You gotta you gotta really learn your patterns it's, and stuff. It's oh, almost cool. kind of a rhythm game. Too, it really right? is. Like you have to know all the timing for everything to avoid everything. All right, my number two. We already know my number one, but my number two, <laughs> uh, maybe predictable, Turtles in Time. Damn, um, that was what I was thinking. Uh, well, and the real thing is, like, I played I know more, how much you like that game. I want to make sure I left it on the board for you. <laughs> I played more Turtles when I was a kid, um, but I've I've played a lot more Turtles in Time since opening the arcade. And I, I think that, especially when it comes to the Konamis, they were, I mean, uh, the different, uh, what was it, um, Sunset Riders, I think, is, like, the greatest. But it's kind of different, right? It's a gun yeah. game. And I think Sunset Riders, the reason it's the greatest of those Konamis um, is because it kind of works on free play. It doesn't feel as lame. Um, so, like, I think that's why I like Sunset Riders so much. But uh, Turtles in Time, to me, feels like the perfect Konami for me to play um, and advance. Like, I didn't know the story because I hadn't really played it a lot when I was a kid. And I know there was a very popular SNES version. Um, of Turtles in Time um, that a lot of people say is like the best SNES uh, brawler. Like the, mm. it'll get it'll be on a lot of top lists. As yeah, like, yeah. And 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 a lot of people put it as you know in their top ten SNES games of all time. Like they really loved it. Well, um, the, the the art scheme is so very colorful. It's eye catching. And it does a whole bunch of like SNES stuff that you're not going to have in the arcade with like Mode Seven scaling all over the place. But I mean, you're still down to only two characters, so you are still better off playing the arcade one. Well, yeah. I, I, there's there's a big debate online. I don't even want to come near that debate as to which version is the be- is the superior version because, uh, you know, Turtles in Time is what I've been playing lately. I love it. I think it's awesome. Uh, so that was my number two with Final Fight being my number one. So, Arthur, number one brawler at Freeplay. I think the best brawler ever made, free play or otherwise, is uh, Dungeon Dragon Shadows Over Mystara. Yep, I think that a- game is just fantastic. It's the only game that really compares to it is Aliens vs. Predator. It, you have one of six characters to pick from and uh, branching paths and a little bit of a technique to it. You can do some cool combos. You can you can learn how to move better. Street Fighter motions will do special attacks. Do you, you level to, up in that game? Uh, yes, but I don't know exactly what it changes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I guess okay. your, your character probably gets a little stronger like in ways that you don't really... Y- you might be able to pick a path through the game where you would level up more. Because yeah. I mean, you're gonna have to kill all the enemies anyway. <laughs> is that is that the one where uh, where you had to like burn the troll? Like you had to actually know the lore and uh, that. Well, the troll because there was multiple the dungeons will, uh, and dragons. Yes. Yeah. The the troll will regenerate, but if you use oil on him or whatever, or I guess cast fireball. But I played not the wizard, so use oil or whatever. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> then uh, you stop that. So like knowing Dungeons and Dragon stuff does actually help help you out. There's all kinds of secret rooms and hidden passages you can find, and it's got some really fun and cool bosses. I think it's just a great game. Uh, it's fun for four players. It's fun for one player, and presumption probably for two or three is pretty good as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's uh, it was one I hadn't really played when we put out. Um, but what we found is that there's a ton of people that would see it, and they might not even play Dungeons & Dragons or have anything to do with Dungeons & Dragons, but they'll see that game, and it'll spark that little nostalgia thing in their head, and they'll run over, and that's the one. That's going to be their game for the rest of the night that they want to play, which is always really cool because there's plenty of games that are super popular that people will recognize, walk over, and play, but not get excited about. But D&D, Shadows or Mystara, people would geek out about and just be like, this was my game, this was my game, and run over and just play it through, and it's, it's really cool to see. Let's see. I, I guess. I guess I have to get my number one. Number one brawler. Well, I, I have to. I have to ask uh, a, a special question for this one. It, it, it may influence my 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 answer. Is Streets of Rage available for the Mega Tech? It is available for yeah, Mega Play. So. Mega yeah. Play. So we have yeah. it. We have it on Mega Play, but we've never put Mega Play out. Then my number one answer is not the cop out of X Men again. <laughs> <laughs> it is not Ninja Gaiden, which might be the worst. Oh, that game's incredible. The <laughs> ninja guy beat him up. <laughs> Ugh. But it it's is. stole music from uh, Black Sabbath. Did it really? Yeah. Okay. One, of the, one of the songs was straight lifted. No. But it's, sorry. <laughs> it's Streets of Rage. And it was a, a Sega Genesis classic, but apparently it's available for the Mega Play. Well, apparently it's on both. Oh, um, it is? Oh, excellent. Excellent. But, um, I don't know. There's a lot of versions, uh, apparently, and I'm I, I'm not really aware, but apparently there is a version on the Megatech, but I'm not sure if it's the good one. Right. Either way, it's good enough for me. This game 
blows it up. It's got like 70 different moves for every character. You can grab them. You can grab them from behind. You can do a little little special move. You can do the grand upper. It's got three different characters, um, depending on the version of the... The Sega Genesis had a whole series of three of them. Every one of them was just absolute classic, gorgeous awesomeness. There's no question in my mind the the answer to the Final Fight versus uh, Streets of Rage debate was Streets of Rage was way better. Streets of Rage is an incredible game. I The soundtrack by Yuzo Koshiro so is so good. Yeah, oh no, my Streets goodness. of Rage, I mean, I don't know. It was a little more violent, right? Like Just a little, I, but yes, not yes, more than the artwork. Well, this, the first one, which is the one that I'm officially picking, uh, involved uh, a special button where you'd hit the button and then the police would come in and fire rockets into the <laughs> <laughs> into the crowd of, of people that you're trying to beat them up. I mean, I, I just I remember playing it for hours and hours and hours. It's not, it's not bloody or gory right, or anything right. like that. So I, I would guess Alien vs. Predator is quite a bit more violent. I would say the final fight, I, uh, the final fight art is the most violent of all. <laughs> that's a, that's a good go. point. There that's a go. good point. I, I have <laughs> tried to block it out of my mind from earlier, but now here it is again. My third strike character, Gosh. Hugo, dead at the hands of Cody, clearly. Right before he gets arrested and thrown Jeez, in jail. That, right. That, that really reminds me we have to put the Mega Play out, though. i got to really start working on that. Oh, we have both of them. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I never even knew that was a thing. I know that we have a Gunstar here as a Mega Play, so that will be kind of fun, too. We've got, I mean, yeah, our Mega Play collection, there's only like 10 Jeez. games. We we Rage is and, so good. So, all right, so, guys, we're well, going to wrap it up I do, really I do want to say the, 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 the beat-em-up genre, and we're talking about Final Fight, and we're talking about Streets of Rage, and the whole thing is predicated on one single movie that you may not have heard of or you should have heard of. It's called Streets of Fire. Mm-hmm. And yep. this, this movie clearly inspired Streets of Rage. It's got a very similar name. It clearly inspired Final Fight. Um Somebody's girlfriend gets kidnapped. Surprise, surprise. Uh, it's Willem Dafoe. He's the leader of a of a bike gang. Like, sound like Mad Gear. The lead character, his name is Cody. And he has to beat up everybody in the city, literally, to get his girlfriend back. Um, he has the help of two friends to do it. And that is literally the inspiration of Streets of Rage, Final Fight. The whole, the whole beat-em-up genre. And then the fighting game genre, by, by extension, uh, belongs to Streets of Fire. So, shout-outs to a classic movie. I want to go see it at Alamo at some point. They, well, they were playing it this summer, and I wanted to go see it. You go see it. Go see that movie. I, I intend to. It, because <laughs> of the lineage alone, and, and, and you're going to be like, whoa, that's from an arcade game. Whoa. Like, as much as shooters have to uh, belong to the movie Aliens, the, the, <laughs> the James Cameron sequel, like, there's so many, like, iconic, you know, Space marine type things that belong to that movie. Uh, Streets of Fire inspired <laughs> so many video games. All right. So we have time for... Really quick, top one shooter on the free play floors. Which which version of shooter are you? Well, uh, what's the uh, shooter? Jeez, that's a good point. Pick yeah. a shooter, you're good. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, any shooter. <laughs> all right, we're going to end, and you're just going to pick a random, shooter, random and, shooter, and that'll be it. All right, Arthur, top one shooter, however you want to define shooter right now. Well, first, I'd like to say that we just got Redilogy in for Naomi, and that's not on the floor yet, but I'm excited to have it there. Cell shaded shooter, but Mushihime-sama. More than anything else, I want someone to come to Arlington and let me record them doing a super play right. of Mushihime Sama. If you know, I am not good enough you to know play the really game. How to play that game? Please come. Please let us record you so me. we can all learn. Um, I need you. All right, all right. That's I mean, all time great. What do you got? Galaga. I'm shocked. I can't believe you picked it. So Galaga. Yeah. I mean, Galaga kind of invented the genre um, in many ways. Technically, Space Invaders, but yes. Um, I mean, you okay. got you. You see Glax and you see Space Invaders and all of the copycats. Um, that that led to it, but Galaga, yeah, um, it ca- it captured people, and it wasn't just popular at the time; it's still popular, right? So it yes. was, it was a really really special kind of. It is um, still popular. It endured in popularity. It never died. Arcades died, and Galaga did not. And now I I mean I I've put Zevius on my list. I put Gyrus, but my top um, from free play, and it's one that we need to get back out. It's the one that kind of was like the first real vertical shooter that I played. 1942. Ah, um, yes. That's a good game. Um, by really, the creator of Gyrus, right? I'm it? almost positive. I, yes. I, I, it could be possible. I mean, that's a great game. And I remember playing that and me- feeling like that was like just a little bit like shmuppy. Like that mm-hmm. was what kind of l- helped me understand what a shmup was. So many stages to that game. Um, There's something like 40 stages, 25 <laughs> stages. Because you literally are blowing up 
every like major name ship from World right. War Two. They really all of them. They really go through it. <laughs> um, all right, so we ran out of time. We were going to try to do top three, more top threes, but there's always another podcast. Um, but for now, we're we're signing off. Remember to subscribe. This is the Free Play Arcade Podcast, um, and we are done for the day. Thanks, guys. All right, go watch Streets of Fire.